Okay, I'm ready to go. I'll just do it as a recording. All right, let's start this story. I think you guys are like this. It's about a Renaissance fair. And I know a lot of you have been to it, and I've seen some in the park too. And um, it's called Vanishing, Vanquishing the Gooples. I think it's a fun little story. Okay, let's do it. Here's how it begins. You can be anything you want to be at the Renaissance Fair. There are dragons, maidens, elves, and fairies. There are live horse races with jousting knights and great big turkey legs the size of your head. Melissa goes every year. This year, she is dressed as a powerful medieval sorceress. She's sewn a cloak from purple velvet, and she holds a long metal staff with an infinitely old crystal set on top. In reality, the staff is just a plastic pole paint silver with a rock glued to the top. But no one else has to know that. To Melissa, it's the magical staff of an ancient warrior witch. As she enters the fair, she is greeted by a very, very tall man on stilts with a stovepipe hat. There is magic here, fair maiden, he warns her from above. Be on your toes. With that, he leaps away into the trees and disappears. Walking around the fair is always an experience. Melissa dodges the marshmallow catapult and an angry warlock with a water gun. The warlock squirts her right in the face. Gotcha, he says. She heads to Psychic Alley to visit Madame La Future, the best gypsy palm reader at the fair. Melissa sits on a bed of silk scarves. Incense sends smoke rings into the air. Give me your hand, child, La Future says, taking her by the wrist. Her eyes grow large and she gasps. The old gypsy falls over in a trance, landing on a soft pile of scars. Wake up, Melissa yells. She sees the warlock who squirted her earlier. Give me your water gun, she yells to the warlock, who seems both baffled and concerned. Melissa squirts the gypsy woman with the water and she awakens from her trance. You are the one, the gypsy woman says, you will be needed tonight. With that, she faints. Come with me, young sorceress, says the warlock. You are lucky you found me. Out of the corner of her eye, Melissa sees something stirring. It's red and covered in feathers. It's adorable. She wants to reach out and grab it. Don't even glance at it, the warlock says. It begins. The warlock takes Melissa by the hand and they run. They do not stop until they're inside his tent at the edge of the woods. He zips the tent door and then a window. We are safe here, he says. Safe from what? What's going on? The red feathery creature you saw earlier, the one I told you not to reach far? You mean like that one, Melissa asked? She points to an almost identical creature sitting in the corner of the tent with blue polka dots on its head. Oh, mercy me, the warlock screams, jumping in the air and nearly taking the whole tent down with him. The feathery creature disappears in a puff of smoke as the warlock continues to scream and shake. You must be out of your mind, warlock. They're absolutely adorable. No. They're gooples and they're evil. Melissa unzips the window and looks outside. There she sees the same feathery little bird creature hopping about. It catches Melissa's eye and makes a chirping noise. This is a goople, harmless, she thinks. In a puff of smoke, the goople becomes 10 feet tall with enormous fangs and oozing sores. Oh, mercy me, Melissa screams, zipping up the window as fast as she can. I told you, said the warlock. No one ever listens to a warlock. The gypsy said, I am the one. Am I supposed to get rid of these creatures? You don't have to get rid of them per se, just you know what, I know what. Spit it out, warlock. They vanquish them by dawn without any of your merry participants at the fair knowing that anything is wrong. I mean, we wouldn't want any bad press over this. And so Melissa and the warlock leave the tent carrying her magical staff which at this moment has turned into a real magical staff. The pair head south to the picnic area where wizards and elves are eating together in harmony. Melissa spots a feathery red goople on a table sitting behind an ear of corn. A little boy is looking at the goople and giggling. The goople starts to inflate, but be before it can get much bigger, Melissa points her staff at it. The goople disappears in a puff of smoke. Melissa approaches the little boy. You saw nothing, she whispers in his ear, handing him a dollar. You're crazy, the little boy says. Melissa and the warlock sneak around the park grounds all day like this,
picking off the goobles with her magic staff. But when the fair closes for night, Lissa doesn't leave. It's dark, and the warlock takes her hand, leading her to the exit gate. Just one more goople, he says, and then we are safe. Melissa looks up to see the biggest scoople of the day blocking the exit, blocking the entire street. Warlock looks at Melissa and nods his head. She points her magic staff at the goopo and it disappears just like all the others. The warlock cheers and pulls off his mask. Nice to meet you, he says. I'm Bob. Well, this is not a real warlock at all. He's just someone who works at the fair and so is the gypsy who is now dressed in jeans and sneakers and riding toward the exit on her bicycle. When Melissa looks down at her staff, it's once again just a plastic pipe with a rock on top. You did a great job playing this game today, Bob says. My name is Shannon, says the gypsy, extending her palm for a handshake. Madame La Future is my alter ego. I hope you had fun today, Bob says, but the fair lasts all week then. Will we see you again tomorrow? Melissa isn't quite sure how to react. She has gotten so into the role playing of the day, she forgot that none of this was real. Oh, yes, of course, Melissa says. I'll be back tomorrow for more games. Splendid, says Bob, and it looks like your ride is here as well. Outside the gate, Melissa's mother is parked in the family car, honking the horn, waiting to take her home. She grabs her magical staff and smiles, smiles to herself. What costume will she wear tomorrow? What does she want to be next? She can be anyone. So this is a story, of course, about imagination and how much fun it is sometimes to exercise your imagination. Let's go to the questions. Question set. Okay, first question. Is, in this story, what is Melissa pretending to be? A medieval sorceress, a gypsy palm reader, a goopal, or a warlock? Well, of course, she's a a medieval sorceress. Question number two, where does the story take place? At a state carnival, at an ancient kingdom, at a renaissance fair, at a campsite? The answer is C, at a renaissance fair. And notice, you always get two close answers. At a state carnival, pretty close to at a renaissance fair, but there's only one Right answer, of course. You just have to have faith when you're doing these multiple choice that there is one right answer, but there's two close ones usually, and that's called a disclaimer. Sort of designed to maybe lead you astray a little bit, but really designed to make you sure you're reading carefully. Okay, question number three. Melissa goes to the Renaissance Fair every year. This year she gets so involved in a role that she forgot it's not real. At the end of the day, she asks herself, who she wants to be next. What conclusion can you draw from this evidence? A, Melissa did not like being a sorceress to Renaissance Fair this year. That's definitely not true. She loved it. Okay, B, Melissa goes to the Renaissance Fair because she likes the food. Uh, we don't know that. So that, that's an over in inference. It's not there. We don't want to answer something that's not there, the information on which you're going to base your answer. So let's go to C. Melissa only wants to be a sorceress at the fair, nothing else. Melissa enjoys dressing up and playing pretend at the Renaissance Fair. I think we got to go with D because we can infer that she's going to be something to else tomorrow. Okay, number four. What best describes Melissa in this story? Is she suspicious? Is she frightened? Is she compassionate? Or is she D, imaginative? I got to go with D, imaginative. She's exercising her, her imagination and she's having a good time, and she gets involved. All right, now, main idea question. Remember, the main idea is always central to everything else in the passage. It's not at the center, it's not necessarily at the beginning, or it's not necessarily at the end, but it is central, and the other ideas stem, from, stem out from it. Okay, main idea. A girl makes her very own Renaissance Fair costume from scratch. Mm, that's a possibility, but too much detail and not enough generalization to be a main idea. B, a girl gets caught up in a game at the Renaissance Fair and forgets it's not real. Sounds pretty good to me, but let's check C. A girl has her fortune told by a palm reader at the Renaissance Fair. That's true, but it's only a fact in the story. It's not the central idea. And D, 
girl finds out she truly has magical powers and has to destroy evil creatures. We can't say that it was truly a fact that she had mag magical powers because it was a lot of imagination. So we have to go with B. A girl gets caught up in a game at the Renaissance Fair and forgets it is not real. All right, moving on to number six. Just after the warlock tells Melissa that she must vanquish the Gooples, the passage state, and so Melissa and the warlock leave the tent carrying her magical staff, which at the moment has turned into a real magical staff. Why does the author state that Melissa's staff has turned into a real magical staff? A, to show that Melissa's staff was actually always magical. B, to show that Melissa now believes that her staff is magical. Boy, keep, the, keep that B in mind as you go through C and D. C, to show that Melissa is actually magical. D, to show that Melissa is proud of the staff she made. There's some truth a little bit in all of these, but she doesn't, she's not actually magical. A lot of this, again, you have to remember is in her imagination. So we got to go with B, to show that Melissa now believes that her staff is magical. All right, let's try number seven. Choose the answer that best completes the sentence below. This is always a grammatical question. You're trying to come up with a word that means about the same as far as keeping the meaning the same. So, blank, the gypsy has told Melissa that she is the one. The warlock tells Melissa that she needs to vanquish the gooples. So, is it after, even though, meanwhile, or before? And I think we got to go with after because the gypsy or the individual playing the gypsy says that she's the one. And then the warlock takes up on that theme and says that she's the one who's going to vanquish the gooples. All right. Very good. Let's try number eight. In reality, what is Melissa's staff made out of? So let's remember back. It's really just a, past, a plastic pole with a, a rock on the end. But in her imagination, it has become magical and a real wand that has a crystal on it, an ancient crystal. All right. D is number nine. What, while at the Renaissance Fair, what does Melissa believe about her staff? Well, use evidence from the Texas. She believes it's real. For the details that I stated before, she doesn't see it as being just a plastic pole with a rock on top. It becomes something very magical with powers and with a crystal on the top, an ancient crystal at that. Sort of gives it even more power in one's imagination. All right, last question. How does Melissa's costume, including her staff, help her fully believe that she is magical? Use evidence from the text to support your answer. Well, what else helps her to become magical? Of course, the costume that she made, but let's expand this answer a little bit. It's the fact that the gypsy and warlock played into her beliefs and made the game seem more real. And of course, more fun. So it was her costume, her staff, and the two other individuals. But most importantly, this is a passage about imagination and how you can use it and enjoy it. With that, I'm going to call it a day. And I hope to see everybody tomorrow back in class.